this. Wait one more second. <laughs> no worries. All right. Welcome everyone to an official event of the ninth annual MSU Science Festival. My name is Hazel Anderson and I'm a member of the Science Festival team. Today with me, I have Atomic Bob, who's going to show us how to extract DNA from strawberries. Yeah. So with that, you can kick it away. All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Atomic Bob. I am with Code 313 Detroit. We are an awesome organization working out of the city of Detroit, helping youth kind of discover really cool things in STEM. So today we are going to be doing something really, really cool. At least I think so. This is called the code of life. We're gonna explore DNA. And if you're following along today, we are gonna be having you guys able to go ahead and actually see DNA with your own eyes. It's such a cool thing, all right? When we think of DNA, DNA is this big mysterious chemical, all right? DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, all right? It's a big word. But DNA is the blueprint, the code that makes every living thing what they are. The reason you look like you do, the reason that your trees outside look like they do, your dog, your cat, everybody, it's because of the code found within DNA. So today, we're going to be doing something really, really cool, is we are going to be actually taking a look at DNA without having to use a microscope, without having to do that. And we're gonna be actually extracting that DNA and letting you guys actually see it. And if you want, even hold it, all right? So DNA, guys, is a really, really cool thing. So let's kind of talk a little bit more about what DNA is, all right? So DNA is this crazy big chemical. It's this double helix. It looks like a twisted ladder. All right. And it has all these different types of kind of, you know, really cool stuff. But if you look at it, all right, it's made up of a very few select parts. All right. So if we look, we have things like our sugars, which is with the S and P phosphate groups. These make up the backbones or the sides of our twisted ladder, our DNA. And in the middle, we have these things called nitrogenous bases, all right? And they have the letters A, T, G, and C. They stand for adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. And it's the order of those A's, T's, G's, and C's that makes up the code that makes you. Every feature that you have as a human being, every feature that your dog or your cat or your goldfish has is all because of the order and the code of those really cool um, parts of the molecule, all right? So today, we're gonna be taking DNA out of something that's actually really easy. Now we could take DNA out of you guys, but let's make it so everybody's really not afraid of it. We're not worried about kind of stuff like that. So today, what are we gonna do? We're gonna take DNA out of strawberries. That's right, strawberries, guys. So what we need you guys to do is I am going to talk about a few things that I need you to gather. So hopefully if you guys were reading the information about this session earlier, there's some things if you want to follow along that you guys need to do. So number one, the most important part is you need some strawberries. All right. So if you guys have strawberries in your fridge or things like that, that's fine. At minimum, you need one strawberry. But if they're smaller strawberries, two or three, that's fine. What else are you going to need for this experiment? Well, number one, you are going to also need a Ziploc bag, all right? You are going to need a coffee filter, all right? I'll explain why in a little bit. You're also going to need a little bit of dish soap, all right? So I have just some palm olive regular dish soap that, you know, we got from the grocery store. Nothing fancy here, all right? Any kind will do. All right, you are going to need a little bit of salt. All right, 
So you don't need a ton, but you do need a little bit of salt. So if you have a salt packet laying around from some leftovers or some takeout, that'll work, all right? So I put my salt in a little graduated cylinder. We're gonna use that a little bit later, all right? You also are gonna need a few other things. You're gonna need some water. This is nothing fancy. I have it in an Erlenmeyer flask here, but this is just plain old water, all right? And one other thing that you are going to need that is super, super duper important is you are gonna need some alcohol, all right? Now, not the drinking kind. We're going to be looking for rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol, all right? So if you guys have anything in a first aid kit from around your house or something like that, this will work. Now, the higher the percentage alcohol it is, the better this works. Now, one other thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take that alcohol and get it super duper cold, all right? Go put it in your freezer for right now. Go take 30 seconds and go pop it in the fridge. Or like I did, I went ahead and I got a big thing of ice water and I put my alcohol into another flask and I'm keeping it on ice water. So when I need it today, it's gonna to be nice and cold and the temperature that I want it to be. All right. One other thing too, is you're gonna need something to mix. So. I have on the ingredients list that you guys can just use a toothpick or something like that. I have a glass stir rod, but whatever you guys want to use to mix it, you are more than welcome to. And the last thing you're going to need is you're going to need a glass. Now, I prefer that you guys get a clear glass. Now, why clear? Because clear is going to let you see the DNA a lot better. All right. So a, a clear glass you have sitting around is going to be something that you're going to want to use. All right. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go through this step-by-step. Step. And at any point, if you guys have any questions, you guys can answer it in the Q or add, ask them in the Q&A section of our webinar, all right? And I'll hopefully get to those questions that you guys have towards the end. All right, so step one, what do we need to do? What we're gonna do is I'm gonna take two of my strawberries that I have right here, and we're gonna extract the DNA out of them. Now, strawberries are what we call polyploids. Polyploids means that they have more than one copy of DNA inside each and every one of the cells, which is really, really cool. So you and I, we have one copy of our DNA inside each and every one of our cells. Because strawberries have a lot more, there's a lot more than we can visualize and a lot more than we can actually see when we do this experiment. All right, so what I want you guys to do today, and it's gonna be super easy to do, we're gonna go ahead and take these strawberries and we're gonna remove the green off the strawberry. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and twist the green part off. Now, if there's a little nub on the top, that's okay. So I'm gonna take one off. I'm gonna take the other one off, all right? And again, if there's a little bit left on the top, that is okay. And I'm just gonna take these greens and I'm just gonna to toss them, all right? Or if you guys have a compost pile in your backyard or something like that, go ahead and start throwing those in there, all right? Now, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take my Ziploc bag that I have right here, any kind of type will do, and we're gonna put our strawberries into our bag, all right? Now, what I would like you guys to do is go ahead and we're gonna seal up this bag, but right before we finish sealing, we're gonna push out the air, all right? Why? Because we don't wanna bust this bag open, all right? Once it's, all the air is pushed out, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna seal up that bag. And now here's the fun part, all right? You're gonna go ahead and you're gonna start mashing these strawberries. So go ahead and start smushing these things up. Now you don't wanna do it so hard that you bust open the bag, but you wanna go ahead and keep on smashing these things up as much as you can, all right? So if you wanna kind of use your table as a little bit of you know pressure and kind of get those going, you wanna get as much of that strawberry smashed as possible. Why? Because we wanna extract and break down those cells. Remember the cells are the part of the strawberry that contains that DNA. And inside of those cells, we have the nucleus, all right? The nucleus is kind of like the brain of the cell, all right? And why we call it the brain or the boss of the cell is because that's where we find our DNA, the, the blueprints to basically make everything that we have as you and I. So it's really cool stuff. So we're going to keep on smashing, keep on going. And then what we're going to get after about, I don't know, 30 seconds or a minute of smashing, once we get most of those big chunks all set, what we're gonna do is kind of make sure that all the strawberries down at the bottom of our bag, 
and we're going to add just a little bit of water. All right. Now, what's nice about this experiment is we don't have to have exact measurements. So you guys can kind of, you know, play like you're on a little cooking show and just eyeball some of the stuff. So I'm going to take water. And again, this is nothing fancy. This is just regular old tap water that I got from my kitchen sink. All right. And I'm going to add a little splash of the water. We're going to make it a little bit more liquidy. So I'm going to go 1,001, 1,002, and that's good. I don't need too, too much. And again, I'm going to go ahead and seal up my bag. Get that air out. I don't want that to bust open on me and make a big mess all over my kitchen table. All right. And now we get a little bit more liquid. We're going to go ahead and we're going to mix that up a little more. All right. So I want to kind of smash that, move that around, keep on getting that going. All right. Nice kind of easy stuff like that. We're going to do that for a good 30 seconds or so. All right. So we're going to keep on making that all mixed up. And now we're gonna start adding some of our special ingredients. All right, so the first special ingredient we're going to add is salt. Now, why do we need to add salt, all right? So let's go back really quick and let's look at a few of our things here. So remember, salt, we have all of these phosphate and sugars that are make up the backbone of our salt, all right? Those things have a charge to them. All right, molecules have different parts of a charge, positive parts of our charge, negative parts of a charge. When we add salt, that's gonna help neutralize that charge. And it's gonna help our DNA come out of our cells a little bit easier, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take our baggie that has our strawberries mashed up with our water. And I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. And again, doesn't have to be a ton, but we're gonna play it like a cooking show. All right, I'm gonna take some of that salt and I'm gonna add a little of that salt in. All right, Doo -doo 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 -doo, right about there. I think that's good. All right, so think about it as a pinch or two of salt, nothing too crazy. And we're gonna do the next step. We're gonna seal it back up again and we're gonna mix. Again, getting that air out of our bag because we don't wanna make that mess. All right. so. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna give that a good mix, make sure that all that salt is getting kind of put in here. So now what do we got inside of our bag? We got basically strawberry salt water. Ooh, probably not the best to eat or drink, all right? but it probably smells pretty good at the moment, all right? So we're gonna get going with that. We're gonna keep on mixing that up. We're gonna keep on actually allowing that to kind of get going here. And next, what are we gonna do? Here comes our dish soap. Now, why are we going to use dish soap? All right, so let's talk about this really quick. If I was cooking, if I was helping mom or dad cook, and I had like greasy hands, maybe we're mixing up a meatloaf or something like that, all right? If I run my hands just under water, that water is going to bead right off my hands, and it's still going to be greasy in the end. But if I use soap, all right, that grease starts to break down. Well, grease and things like that, those are fats. Those are a category of molecule known as lipids. And lipids, all right, can be broken down by soap, all right, surfactants and soap. Now, what's really cool about that is if we think about where our DNA in our cell is located, it is located inside the cell. So the cell is surrounded by what we call a phospholipid bilayer. That is a fancy schmancy word for basically saying it's kind of like a grease layer on the outside of our cell. And then the nucleus, which contains that DNA, that's made out of a very similar material. It's kind of like that grease, that lipid, all right? So if we add some soap to this, not only is that gonna help break open our cells, but it's also going to help break open the nucleus and allow our DNA to flow out into our mixture. All right, so what are we gonna do? I'm gonna open up my bag. I'm gonna take my soap. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add just a squirt. All right, so it doesn't have to be too much. So one thing right there, not a ton, but I do need a little bit of soap to go in there. All right, once I'm good with that, I'm gonna move this and get this all sealed, get that air out. 
Now, here's an important part. I want to slowly mix this. I don't want a bunch of suds, all right? Now, a little bit of bubbles is going to be natural, and that's okay. But I want this to kind of get all mixed up. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to get that soap that we just added to touch all of the different cells that are kind of floating around inside of our mixture, all right? So what we're doing is we're breaking open those cell membranes, we're breaking open the nucleus, we're letting that DNA out into that salt water. That salt water is helping to basically neutralize that charge of the DNA itself. All right, we're basically getting an ideal environment to extract this DNA, to get this DNA to come on out and to allow it to actually be visible, which is really, really, really cool, all right? So again, we're trying not to get all the soap. Now, obviously, you're gonna have some soap bubbles and that's okay, but we don't want this to foam up and kind of start kind of coming up like you're taking a bubble bath or something like that. All right. So now that we have all this and it's been mixed up and we've kind of kind of massaged the bag a little bit to get all that soap to interact with as many of the individual cells as we can. Now here comes the fun part. At least I think it's the fun part. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and you're going to grab your clear glass. All right. So I have just a clear kitchen glass right here. If you don't have a clear glass, get the glass that you can, that you can see through it the best. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to take our coffee filter. All right. And I'm going to take that coffee filter and we're going to put that in my glass. All right. So I'm going to turn it on the side here so you guys can see what I just did. All right. So I have the coffee filter kind of sitting in the glass itself. I'm gonna make sure that all the folds kind of get pushed off to the side. So I make a pocket on the inside. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my strawberry mixture, I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna very, very carefully pour it into my filter, all right? So I'm gonna try to pour all that liquid that I just had in here into my coffee filter, all right? These are things, again, that you guys can just get at your own house. You probably have laying around in your kitchen. Nothing too crazy here. And what's cool about this is you can actually show, you know, mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, when it's all said and done, that this actually works. All right. So I got my strawberry liquid. And it's kind of like almost like gooey, like jello-y now in there because of the soap and everything else we added to it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully, you got to be careful with this, lift this up gather all the sides together, all right? Kind of like this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna slowly, and this is a key part because this is gonna be a very thin piece of paper here that we're using as a filter. And we're going to just slowly put some pressure on it. Now don't put a full squeeze because this will break right open, all right? I'll tell you that. What we're trying to do is we're trying to juice this. We're trying to get just the liquid out and leave all the chunks of the strawberry behind, all right? So this will take a minute or so to get going. And yeah, you're probably gonna have some sticky strawberry hands in the end and that's okay, all right? There's worse things your hand can smell like other than strawberries. But again, the key part is to be gentle and to take your time here, all right? Because the last thing we want to do is to burst open our filter paper. And then we got to start all over again with this. All right, we got to refilter it. All right, so keep on going and keep on adding a little bit of that liquid and make sure it's all getting juiced out into your clear cup. All right, keep on going, keep on going. I'm going to take another minute or so to kind of get going on this. And again, this is probably the most time consuming part of this experiment. But I promise you, the more of this juice you get out, the better results you're going to get. It's going to be really cool. I promise you on this. All right. So I'm getting this going. I'm getting a little more of this juice coming out right here. All right, about 30 more seconds of juicing here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead 
And I'm going to take all this because my hands are all now filled with strawberry juice. And I'm going to kind of move this aside. And I have a little bit of water next to me in my lab desk here. So I'm going to just rinse off my fingers, but you may want to take 30 seconds and run to your nearest sink or whatever you need to do and get yourself a clean off fingers because we want to be able to make sure that we're not getting everything sticky. All right. So I got my hands all clean and all set from there. And what we got right now is in my clear glass, I got all this strawberry juice. And again, it's a little more gelatinous. It's a little more kind of, you know, thicker than we would like to think for strawberry juice, but this is good. All right. So here is where the magic happens. And I promise you, this is going to be really, really, really cool. What you're going to do is you're going to now go run and get your alcohol that you guys got. So again, isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol, any of those things will work right there. All right. Make sure it came out of your freezer or your ice bath or wherever you're using it. And I have mine sitting right here that was sitting in my ice bath, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and take off my top of my flask. And here is the really cool, but the part that you gotta pay attention to. So what we're gonna do is we are going to pour our alcohol and we're going to layer it by density, all right? So our strawberry liquid and our alcohol are two different densities, which means that if we do it and pour it very carefully, instead of having them mix, we can get one to basically lay on top of the other one, which would be really, really cool. So we wanna to try to do that. So the best way to do that is to basically hold your strawberry glass at an angle, take your alcohol, either right from the container or you can pour it into another glass and we're going to slowly pour it down the side of our glass while it's ice cold. Again, slow and steady here gets a much better job, all right? We're trying not to make sure that they are mixing, all right? And you wanna pour a decent amount into your glass. Oh, and I already see it working. All right, I'm gonna put mine back in here. And here's what we're gonna see. I'm gonna kind of move my camera a little bit for you guys. Let's see, it's, uh, there we go. All right, so look at that guys. You're gonna see this almost like this cloud forming in the alcohol layer. That white stuff that we're seeing right here. So if I take my little stir rod, this stuff right here that I'm able to move around and gather Guys, that is DNA. Look, how cool. All right, I'm gonna kind of move my camera again and I can gather all this. And the longer you let this sit, the more and more DNA we can get to come out of our strawberry mixture. Now, does this itself look like a double helix? No, it doesn't. That's because this right here, guys, is hundreds, perhaps thousands of those DNA molecules that are all kind of gathered together and tangled. Think of this as like a bowl of spaghetti and everything has been kind of like mixed. You know, I could try to take a single noodle out, but instead it kind of got all wound together into this big mixture. So what's really cool is we can take our toothpick or we can take our, you know, stirring thing. It can be even a spoon if you guys want to. And you guys can take this out and you get this like clear, translucent, like almost looks like a booger. And it's really weird. That was in your strawberry the entire time. And don't be like, oh my God, I'm never gonna eat a strawberry again. Everything that was alive, every plant, every animal that you've ever eaten, it has DNA in it, all right? And what's really cool is if you extract DNA from other things, guys, it's gonna look very similar, all right? Because it's made of the same few ingredients. It's made up of the sugar and the phosphate backbone, all right? It's made out of the same A's, T's, G's, and C's. 
it has all the same stuff, but it's the order of those A's, T's, G's, and C's that makes you different than your dog, your cat, your brother, your sister, your tree outside, blades of grass on your front lawn, all those things. It's all different and it's all unique. So if you want to take that DNA and to actually get this to stay and be preserved, what you can do is you can actually take a little bit of that alcohol that you had and you can actually move that DNA from your strawberry mixture and you can put it into a little kind of container of the alcohol and that DNA should stay fairly preserved for quite a long time, all right? So again, what's really cool is we can do the same experiment in similar fashion with like cells from your own body, all right? We can extract cheek cells from inside of your mouth and do a very similar experiment where we're adding the same kind of things. We're adding salt, we're adding soap, we're adding alcohol, and we're getting the same stuff. And what's really cool is human DNA that comes from you and I looks almost identical to the strawberry DNA because really it's the same stuff. So with that, everybody, that is our DNA extraction really short and concise. It's a lot of really cool stuff we can do with it. There's a lot more we can, ex we can explore and understand about DNA. But what I wanna do right now with like the three minutes that we have left in our panel is open it up to any questions that you guys may have. So um, there's a Q&A section down below. If you guys have any questions, you're more than welcome to kind of type them in and uh, let me know. Or Hazel, if you see anything, let me know. Yeah, we have a couple from the Facebook stream. Sure. Um, someone asked, would using a higher al alcohol, edible ethanol work well as well for the alcohol component? You could, yeah. So if you have ethanol, which is the, the consumable type of alcohol, um, then yes, that, that is a something that you can work with that. So any alcohol would work. I just recommended the isopropyl or the rubbing alcohol because it's easy to get to. And anybody, you know, you don't have to be 21 to buy this stuff. And please don't drink this. Don't, you know, don't do that. Um, but uh, you can go to your local Rite Aid, CVS and get that. But if you have ethanol of a high alcohol content sitting around, um, that will work just fine with this as well. Yes. Yeah. Um, another question, when you're adding the alcohol to the strawberry mixture, is it good to like the decent amount equal to the strawberry mixture, a little bit more, a little bit less? It, it, it's subjective, honestly. Um, I, the more you add, depending on the container you're doing it in. So if I am doing it in like a little test tube or something like this, I'm not going to need as much, but I like to have enough where it's going to give room for my DNA to rise into. So you could probably do a one-to-one -one ratio, maybe a two-to-one, but it is subjective. Um, the more I use, I probably had on my glass here because of it's a wider glass I use for the camera. I probably had maybe almost a five to six to one ratio on my alcohol to my strawberry mixture, but it really is adding enough that you can actually just give room for your, for your DNA to rise into. So there's no exact mm -hmm. ratio or number that we need to use. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I don't see any other questions. Okay. Well, I thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate you guys letting me being part of uh, the the Michigan State Science Festival. This was a really cool experience, and thank you for everybody else for tuning in. Yeah, everyone tuning in. Be sure to check out our schedule for the rest of today's events. We have lots more and throughout the rest of April. So thank you for joining us. All right, thank you.